Well, good afternoon. We have a subject before us that, in a way, I deliver it with a very broken heart. You might ask why, and it's simply because we are living in a nation now that is forgetting God. And not only forgetting God, but leaving God out of everything, not only our classrooms, but even our homes. And even the leaders of our Congress now are turning their backs, many of them, on God, saying there is no God. And I've asked the question to myself the last couple weeks, are we just one step away of not being the home of the brave and the land of the free? Where is America headed? And we're going to look at that today as we look at a portion of God's Word. During this pandemic we're in, and we know the frustrations that it brings, People are now crying out to God. Where's God? Why doesn't he help us? Well, that brings us to a verse in Galatians. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You see, the law of the harvest is not only applicable for an individual or a family, but it's also applicable for a nation. And we're experiencing that right now. I wonder if it's possible to predict the future of a nation like the United States. Well, yes, in this sense. As you look at that verse there in Galatians, the law of God, the laws of the harvest, they do not change. We are now reaping well, we have sown for the last hundred years. America has lost its spiritual direction. America has pulled away from its foundations. It's like it doesn't have a compass anymore and has no clue what direction to go in. And we're on a collision course with a lot of evil disasters. Listen to the word in Proverbs chapter 30. There is a generation that is pure in their own eyes, yet is not washed from their own filthiness. And then look at what it says in Psalms. The wicked shall return to hell, and all of those nations that forget God, and the one in your screen is a little shorter than that. Strong words. And it has been said by some very wise people that every nation is only one generation away from paganism and anarchy. Or a society without any more government rule. And we are going down that path, aren't we? The Bible has now become a, a foreign thought in a lot of our cities in a lot of our towns, a lot of our homes. We're in that generation. And now, as if you'd have told me this six months ago, I wouldn't have believed it. We can't even gather together. Not even allowed to go into our churches. And it seems like everything that is good and godly is being made fun of, it is being impugned, it is being ridiculed, and it is like forcing Christian thoughts, families, and churches back into a corner. We're seeing the beginnings of this anarchy. And after 252 years of freedom and independence, they're now slowly the freedoms are being snuffed out. We're no longer looked at as a republic. We started that way. We were a republic. A nation that was based on unchangeable laws of God and, and good laws set up by men. But now we are seen as a democracy. We're slowly that the rule is determined about the mob or the masses, and they make the laws. 
And the right and wrong is determined by those who scream the loudest. And that's a shame. Our leaders today in America are starting to really wink at sin and injustices. And the sad thing is, even the body of Christ, in the last hundred years, it seems like we have been, become softer and softer on sin. Leaders compromising the Word of God everywhere you look. If I had three chairs sitting out here, and the first chair would be the chair of conviction, the second chair, the chair of compromise, the third chair, the chair of confusion, you can see quickly what has happened even in our churches. At one time, there were strong convictions and a little bit of compromise led to what? Confusion. If you have your Bibles, I would like you to open your Bibles to Isaiah uh, chapter 59, and we will look at verses 1 through 8 today as we answer the question, where is America headed? And we're going to see in verse 2, for your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. You see, the, the same barrier 3,500 years ago that separated Israel from God is the same barrier that is separating us from God. Sin. It is not separating us from his love. It is separating us from his blessing, his benefits, his forgiveness, his fellowship. And we're the same boat that Israel was years ago. Listen to Psalm 66. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. America is a nation that is iniquity in her heart. God says, I will not hear. So the problem is not God the Father. The problem is our sin. And judgment, because of the law of the harvest, is coming. Sin separates us from God. Look at verse 3. For your hands are defiled with blood. 62 million. I can't wrap my, my mind around that. Babies that were murdered and slaughtered in the womb in, since Roe versus Wade. That makes some of the things of Hitler and, and all of that catastrophic killing back then. It looks like child's play. 62 million. And we wink at it. And we're so concerned, concerned about COVID-19 and it's a legitimate virus. We're shutting everything down for that. But we don't shut anything down for the slaughtering of a baby or the killing in the homes. We don't shut anything down. For your hands are defiled with blood. And then America cries out during this time and says, what sins? It says, your iniquities have separated you. And America cries out like, like, what sins are you talking about? Well, our cities have been turned into slaughterhouses. In one month in New York, 105,000 slaughtered babies. Drugs sucking the life out of children and teens everywhere. Four and a half million of our teenagers are on drugs in our cities. And like Jeremiah, it's like perversion and immorality flowing in our streets. And then there's 
government officials, lying, scientists, falsifying records, workers, altering their resumes, CEOs that lie to promote products, agents, sale of secret documents, drones flying into private sectors, divorce courts in a total quandary, students cheating all the time, tongues that are full of evil and shamelessness, and the Lord hates a lying tongue. I want to look for just a moment of what has happened in the United States of America in the last 60 years. But I want to preface it with Isaiah as we look down at verses 3 and 4 now. If you have your Bibles, follow along. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongues have muttered wickedness. No one enters justly. No one goes to law honestly. They rely on empty pleas, and they all speak lies. And they conceive mischief, and they give birth to iniquity. Notice what has happened in the last 60 years. 1962, Supreme Court says no more prayer in our schools. 1963, no Bibles in the classrooms. Followed real close, didn't it? 1980, the Ten Commandments were taken out of every classroom. 1982, they took the teaching of creation by God out of the classrooms. 1990, the handing out of free condoms to girls in high school. 2005, teaching that a man with a man and a female with a female is a normal lifestyle for our nation. 2006, the teaching of Wiccan and witchcraft is a viable and a comforting religion. 2008, (coughs) excuse me, high school girls can receive private funding for any abortion with no parental knowledge whatsoever. 2012, the corruption of the political ranks became so rampant, there is now a two-part judicial system. Politicians are being brought to justice, and yet a lot of indictments will never happen. 2015, pagan religions are taught They are encouraged in every college campus, but not Christianity. What does the Word of God say about that? Listen to Acts 17, 31. For he has set a day certain that he, God, will judge the earth with justice by one man, Jesus. He'll be back, and he'll bring that judgment. And then there's the rapid moral decay of our families. Let me share some of these. Verse 7 says their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Think about the deplorement, deploring things that are happening in the family home. The Bible says in 2 Timothy that these days are going to come And not only are they going to come, but they're going to be perilous times in the home. Violent crime, 480% increase in the last 50 years. We used to be able to walk in any city at night. In my lifetime, never a problem. Not today. Federal prisons are up 490% in 50 years. There's 2.5 million men and women incarcerated today, millions more on parole, and now they're talking about letting them out into our streets. Out of wedlock births, up 500% in 50 years. This is a sad one, 40% 
of all pregnancies are now aborted. Every child spends a minimum of six hours every day with television, movies, iPods, iPads, all kinds of technical, I can't even say the word. 15% of everything on the internet today is porn. And not only that, the porn industry is $100 billion a year, more than all the sports combined. Did you know that $100 billion a year would feed half of the planet? Porn. 60% of America today think that we are living in a racist nation. That's tragic. 60% think we're living in a racist nation. And I find that interesting because 10 years ago, before Obama and Biden became president and vice president, it was only 28%. 50% of all Southern Baptist members only attended church once last year. A universal neglect of church attendance. It's not just them, it's everywhere. And now look where we're at. One little virus that Matthew 24 told us about was gonna happen, pestilences in the last days. It has shut everything down, including the gathering of the body of Christ. This last one, women were asked in 1959, is it right to have sexual relationships with a man before marriage? 90% said no. Today, 19% said it's not right. Folks, everything I shared right there was the last 60 years. That's where America is headed. And why is that? It's because we have been served up a bunch of snake eggs, deadly philosophies and ideas from the pit of hell and Satan. And when they are swallowed by a nation, their sins have brought separation from God. Look at verses 5 and 6. They hatch adder's eggs, they weave the spider's web, and he that eats the eggs, they will die. Their webs will not serve as clothing. Men will no longer cover themselves. Let's take a look at just five rotten eggs. And these five rotten eggs has forever changed America in just the last 100 years. Five eggs thrown in an omelet, people eat it, Bible says they die. I want to mention some. The first egg, would, we'll call it Charles Darwin, the father of evolution. Every classroom in America now has heard of him. When I was a little boy, it was never mentioned. But he is the father of evolution. And all the books and all the speeches that crept into our classrooms said that there is a descent of man. That all life, like you and I, came from ooze and goo. Just by random chance, it took a billion years to go from a frog to a princess. Now, we can laugh at that, but people believe it. Listen to a quote from Charles Darwin. A scientific man ought to have no wishes, no affection, just a heart of stone. That's pathetic. Here's another one. You ever heard of Sigmund Freud? He's the father of modern psychoanalysis. He's the one that said God is just in your imagination and God is only needed by the dumb and the weak population. 
And people fell for it. He says, man is truly only motivated by erotic sexual pleasure. And there should be more of an encouragement for the gay and the lesbian communities. Let me give you two of his quotes. A cigar at most times is just a cigar. That's kind of stupid, really, isn't it? If you go from air to air, you will soon be led to complete truth. That's a dumb egg. <laughs> Here's another in Karl Marx, the father of communism, Marxism. We hear it everywhere now in our mobs and our things that are going on in our cities. He's the one that wrote the Communist Manifesto. He is the one that has always advocated atheism. He's the one that said in his lifetime, all of the Bible and God would be out of Russia. Well, that has not happened. God's still in Russia. He did everything he could to dethrone Christ. Listen to two of his quotes. The last capitalist that we will hang shall be the man that sold us the rope. Religion is the opium of the people. Religion is the sigh of the weak and the oppressed. That's a sick egg. Here's another one. George Hegel, the father of the Hegelian philosophy. What is that? He's the one that said that there are no absolutes in life. Boy, try that with the Word of God. And it has crept into our Christian colleges, no absolutes. Everything's relative. Let me give you an example. Well, his famous quote, he actually says, there are no absolute truths in life. This is the way he did it. You have a thesis, and then you have an antithesis, and then you challenge the truth with a synthesis, and then you meet in the middle, and that becomes a new thesis with a comprised compromise truth. Wow. Now you can understand the chair of conviction. You go to compromise. It will always end in confusion and never get back to the absolute. Sick egg. Ludwig Feuerbach, the man that said there is no God, and yet he wrote a very popular book called The Essence of Christianity. And the essence of that book was secular humanism. He said these words, there is no God. There is just a great inner desire that needs to be expressed and followed by each individual. He made a claim that Christianity would fade away and soon vanish from the planet. <clears throat> now this is just five omelets that we have mentioned and has been served up by billions. And I'm going to show you a picture of some of the people that ate these omelets and these bad eggs and they died spiritually. These are the rotten omelets and they're still being served up to our children and to our grandchildren. Look who ate them. Hitler, Stalin, Idiomin, Madame O'Hare, Muhammad, Jim Jones, Sun Moon, Mary Baker Eddy, Joseph Smith, and you could have hundreds more that have bitten into the omelets and they've died. The Bible says the nation that will not serve God, that nation will perish. Yea, those nations shall be wasted. Are we heading there? And yet, folks, it saddens me. I've got to mention another omelet. You and I are part of this one. Sometimes it's so easy to blame all these sinners. And these are very obvious rotten eggs. But they're just doing what they do. They sin. <coughs> Why? 
What is the omelet that is rarely mentioned? Well, it's the diluted gospel, the diluted church. Gospel light, that's everywhere today, isn't it? Great taste, but less, less filling. The offense of the cross has been removed. Why did Sodom and Gomorrah be destroyed? It wasn't because there was too much sin. The reason Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, there was not enough salt in the city. And for the last hundred years, shame on a lot of our churches. Being watered down and compromised with the truth. And true Christianity is now being ridiculed and vilified and hated. And we've made rooms for all other gods, and it's a shame. There's a lot of good men, a lot of good pastors, hallelujah, that are standing up for the truth. You know who they are. But there's a lot of churches in America <clears throat> that have opened their arms, thinking that it's going to help, compromising the truth. One of them is with Islam. It's called Chrislam. And folks, you don't get in bed with Buddha or Hare Krishna's or Allah or the earth goddess Gia and say, well, everything's hunky-dory with Jesus. No, it's not kumbaya. We need to stand for the truth, the Bible alone. It's Jesus Christ by faith alone. And never compromise to where we have a Bud Light gospel. What does the gospel light do? People are making excuses for their sins today. They're trying to exclude sin. The word repent is barely used in our churches. Don't talk about a bloody religion we hear. You take the blood of Christ, the cross out of it, you don't even have Christianity. Wow. Then look at verses 5 and 6. <clears throat> Their webs will not serve as clothing. Men will not cover themselves with what they make. Their works are the works of iniquity, and deeds of violence are in their hands. Isaiah 59, verses 5 and 6. <clears throat> Look at America today. We have clothed ourselves, America has, with all kinds of sticky webs. And all of these spiders that spin these webs. Souls are being trapped everywhere. And some are so bound so tight, They'll never get out. What about the black widow? The Bible says that those that lie in wait, they're everywhere. You ever been to an international airport? Did you know that there are cults lying in wait? Sometimes you can see the Hare Krishna looking for a person that's sad, looking for someone that is vulnerable. And they will pounce. Or the wolf spider. They actually chase their prey down and bring them into the web. Politicians are doing that today. Cults knocking on door to door, dragging men and women into their webs. Well, those are some ugly ones there. Crab spider, waiting to pounce, waiting to pierce. Again, all kinds of false religion. Or about the jumping spider. Waiting to jump. There's all kinds of mobs today and, and gangs. There's 33,500 gangs in America this afternoon. 33,500. 
street gangs, prison gangs, motorcycle gangs, nearly two million in the gangs, like jumping spiders, wreaking havoc wherever they go. And then you got the nice little garden spider. They just bounce the web. Folks, that's maybe one of the most dangerous. Oh, they don't bite you, they just bounce the web. In other words, they will entice with something so simple at any moment, you don't even know you're caught till maybe five years down the road. Let me give you a few sticky webs. Sports. I love baseball, I love basketball, I love all of them. But it becomes a web that traps me. Every one of these sticky webs have brought people into bondage where they never see Christ. <clears throat> and there are some pretty sticky webs out there. It doesn't matter if you're talking about the Hollywood industry or the games played and offered today or even call some of the sticky webs like the media and the chat rooms and porn and movies. And what about the webs of the drugs in all forms, illegal and even legal ones? What about the secret societies, the Illuminati, the Templars, Argaduna, the Order, the Bilderbergers, Trilateral Commission, the Freemasons, Skull and Bones? All of these are secret societies. And sick things like this, all moral and immoral teachers saying that sodomy is fine and children everywhere practice that, every practice that feels good, just do it. Why? Because children need to flex their wings. No, they don't. They need to be under the authority of godly parents. And that's where we're at. Isaiah 59, 7 and 8. Head on collision. Listen to the words of Isaiah 7 and 8. <clears throat> 59, 7 and 8. Their feet run to evil, and they are quick to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their highways. <clears throat> the way of peace these people do not know. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the public squares, and truth is lacking. That's just last week in Portland, Oregon. And we remember what happened a few months ago in Minnesota. People burning down squares and towns and businesses. And those same, same pagan forces, they're everywhere. Some are subtle even. I'm sorry, folks, but these are sources of pagan webs, and they're trapping people at every turn. Where's your children? Where's your grandchildren getting their truth? If it's not at the family altar with dad and mother reading their Bibles or at church, they're going to get it on one of these. And does that concern you? It so upset me that a few years ago, it took me a couple years, I wrote a book for my nine grandchildren. I only made about 10 or 12 copies, gave one to my dad and a couple of my friends. And the book is Google or Grandpa. You're gonna run to Google or you're gonna run to Grandpa. Now I got grandchildren, some are married, some are teens, some are very small. But inside of this book, I have 80 pages of what I believe on 50 of the most maybe sensitive subjects. 
It's what I believe, what the Word of God says, and they do. They read it once in a while. Now, you can run to Google, or you can run to Grandpa. And my, some of my subjects were abortion, cremation, war, fornication, children, homosexuality, rights, cults, death, demons, salvation, Christ, God, Satan, divorce, anger, alcohol, forgiveness, love, loneliness, porn, prayer, Satan, giving, the unpardonable sin, the will of God, witnessing, prophecy, calls, and on and on. Dads and mothers, what do you think on these subjects? Your children need to know. They can run to Google, but it's not going to be the right answer. Because Google and Amazon and Facebook is not where you get the truth. So the question that follows that, and by the way, I'd encourage you dads, granddads, you start your own. Read and write down your convictions on areas. So Deuteronomy says, 6 says, there's going to come a time they're going to ask you. If you don't have an answer, they're going to go to Google. It's a choice we need to consider. So the question comes, is freedom going away in America? The answer is yes. It is slowly sliding away. Why is that? Every great civilization has lasted for about 250 years to 300. If you go back to Plymouth Rock, we're 400 years, but the Declaration of Independence, we're about, what, 240, 244? <clears throat> but this is very revealing. There's been a lot of great civilizations come and go. But why is it they only last for about 250 years? And then they fade completely from the scene. It's because there's a cycle that every single one has gone through. Follow ours. We came to this country because we wanted what? We wanted to get away from the bondage and the tyranny of religion, and we wanted to have to worship the way we wanted. And people came here with a spiritual faith. Faith led to a tremendous courage and loyalty. Courage led to an incredible liberty. Liberty led to abundance for all men. Abundance led to selfishness and pride. Pride led to complacency. Complacency turned into apathy. Apathy led to moral filth and decay. Moral decay led to dependence, and from dependence, it's back to bondage. We're right there, folks. Bondage is judgment. We see the sliding of America in this cycle. And all of these, every one of them, Satan has hounded Christians for 6,000 years. And they're all, de they're all tied to the decline of the nuclear family. Tear the family apart, everything falls. As goes the family altar, so goes the family pew. As goes the family pew, so goes the nation. Look at ours. hundred years ago, everybody went to church. 150 years ago, probably about everybody had worship. Are you having worship in your homes? You're not even going to church anymore. You see how fast it goes? 
We need the family altar. Make sure that you're transferring the truth of God's Word into the lives of those you love. What is the key to survival? Well, it says in Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. The key to survival is revival. We are the ones, the Bible says that we're the salt or the light of the world. But a city set on on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a basket, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that is in the house. Are we being that ray of hope and that ray of light? 1 Peter 4, 17, For the time has come, America, that judgment must begin at the house of God. Are we there? We begin by repenting of our own sins. And for the sins of the nation, we cry out to God. We begin by making sure that we are in the center of God's will, repenting and confessing and reading and praying. We begin by not contributing to the sins of the nation and compromising the truth. We begin by making sure our children and grandchildren are reading their Bibles in a systematic way. We begin by pulling the plug. Every once in a while, on news media consumption. And read the Word. We begin by letting the family know that the greatest asset that they have on the planet Earth right now is the body of Christ, the church. You know what makes me sick? I looked at some statistics back in January and February. Did you know that church attendance for the first time in 30 years, it was on the rise and then COVID-19 hit. And now it's about completely disbanded. But did you know also that there are still strong believers and strong pastors in our cities that are doing everything they can to get the truth out? Did you know that the same pagan forces that faced Elijah on Mount Carmel, the same pagan forces that faced the Apostle Paul on Mars Hill, is still the same pagan forces that are battling your home, your community, where you live. It doesn't matter if you're talking about Modesto, Quinter, Kansas, Covington. It doesn't matter. It's everywhere. And Paul's letter to Timothy is so strong for us today. Listen to what it says in 2 Timothy 3. You, however, must continue in the things that you have learned and be confident about. You know who taught you, and how from infancy you have known the holy writings. Wow. My friend, do you know the things that God wants you to know? That's a simple question. Do you know the things that God wants you to know? Do you know that he is the creator of all things and you will never budge from that? 
He did create in six days the whole planet 6,000 years ago. Don't budge from that. Know that he loves you and he chose you. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. Read the word. God loves you. He chose you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Know that he wants us to glorify him in these bodies. He says, I want you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Don't be conformed to the things of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It comes from the Bible. Know that he wants us to love, live, and look for his return. Wow. Bible says, be patient. Sometimes it's pretty hard. I'm, I'm a very impatient man. But he says that in James. Be patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord is drawing nigh. Drawing nigh. Someday soon. Folks, we're living in a still a wonderful country. But we need to do our part as believers to do everything we can to stand for Christ, live for Christ, share Christ. Because I think the imminent return of our Savior is very, very close. Let's pray. Father, uh, thank you, thank you for this little study that uh, we did and shared. Father, we know that there's, there's no shortage of sermons and books or writings on the last days. And Father, forgive us if, if it just seems like a bunch of speculation and, and, sensual, and sensationalism, but Father, we trust what we shared was the truth out of Isaiah. Thank you for the prophet Isaiah. Thank you for the warnings that he gave us thousands of years later. And Father, help us to repent as a nation. And we pray for the leadership of this country. We pray for the leaders of our churches. We pray for the dads and the moms and the grandfathers and the grandmothers to stand bold, to stand in the gap with the truth of the gospel. And Father, help us to be ready for whatever comes in the months and the weeks ahead. And thank you for the promise of that eternal home. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.